For the first time, scientists have intentionally shaken the Earth of Yellowstone. New research uses artificial earthquakes generated by trucks with vibrating hydraulic plates to better understand the depth and characteristics of the top of the magma chamber beneath the Yellowstone caldera. Stating in many places in Yellowstone National Park, the telltale signs of a buried heat source are unmistakable, making one wonder how far beneath my feet is the magma. The answer is important for fundamental science questions about the magma reservoir as well as for understanding Yellowstone's potential hazards. There is a long history of physical and chemical measurements providing evidence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera, with estimates of the depth to the top of the reservoir ranging from about 3 to 9 kilometers, about 2 to 5.5 miles below the surface. Most previous seismic imaging has estimated good 3D structure that is informative about the approximate size, shape, and location of the magma reservoir. A limitation is that the resulting reservoir edge is indistinct. Sharpening the view is important because a better understanding of the depth and characteristics of the top of the magma reservoir will provide additional insights into magma storage and magmatic gas release. To get a more detailed view of the top of the magma reservoir and to determine its depth and whether it is marked by gradual or abrupt transitions, a team of seismologists used a controlled seismic source and hundreds of seismometers to image the subsurface. The controlled source is a 53,000-pound truck with a vibrating hydraulic plate that creates seismic signals like small, purpose-built earthquakes. Over the summer of 2020, the truck created these special earthquakes on a number of paved roads throughout the caldera. The work was done in the middle of the night to avoid impacting park visitors, either from small ground vibrations or traffic congestion. The seismic signals generated by the truck were measured at several dozen permanent stations in the Yellowstone Seismic Network. And about 600 seismometers were temporarily installed along roads and trails specifically for this seismic experiment. The seismic waves generated by the truck were tuned to bounce off the magma chamber, with the data from those bounces expected to provide new insights into where the top of the magma chamber is and what it looks like. In addition to finding the top of the magma reservoir and determining that its boundary is less than about 100 meters, 330 feet thick, the seismologists estimated the concentration and type of fluid at the very top of the reservoir. They found that a two-part mixture of magma and solid mineral crystals alone would not explain the strength of the reflected seismic signal, but a three-part mixture with bubbles of supercritical fluid, magma, and solid mineral crystals better explain the reflections. These results are consistent with geochemical models that suggest bubbles would emerge from magma stored at moderate depths, such as 3.8 kilometers, 2.4 miles. At greater depths and higher pressures, the elements that make up the bubbles would remain dissolved in the magma. But at the depths measured by the new seismic data, bubbles would emerge from the magma and rise to form a layer above the magma reservoir. That may sound alarming, the accumulation of bubbles in a magma reservoir could be a necessary step in creating conditions favorable for an eruption, but it depends on the concentration of the magma and the bubbles. Fortunately, the Yellowstone magma system appears to be in a stable configuration. Seismic reflections indicate about 14% liquid and about 86% solid crystals in the reservoir layer. Under these conditions, bubbles would be expected to rise efficiently to the surface, preventing excessive pressure buildup. Indeed, this is consistent with gas measurements that have found magmatic gas emitted at the surface in many areas of Yellowstone National Park. Finding evidence of bubbles above Yellowstone's magma reservoir provides a new perspective that is consistent with the long-term view of a largely solid and currently stable magmatic system. The results also highlight that measurements of bubble accumulation beneath volcanoes may be generally feasible, again demonstrating that using Yellowstone as a natural laboratory can help better understand volcanoes and their eruptions elsewhere on Earth.